And welcome to season number 98, Soden Bowl. We are approaching the halfway point of our season, and welcome to an episode of Run It Back with myself, S. Soden, sponsored by Allied Plumbing and Heat, a name that you can trust. Happy Saturday, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have a new broadcast set up here we're going to bring to you. I want to go over a few things uh, so we're going to move into our new setup here. I hope you guys enjoy it. All right. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get this party started. And here you have it. Are the New England Patriots for real? Uh, a. Soden sitting at 5-2. and two. His last win was a shutout victory uh, over the Cleveland Browns, who really dominated on Snipes TV. Uh, Snipes Television, the Cleveland Browns absolutely dominated the then undefeated uh, Cincinnati Bengals. And you look over, uh, you look over this Patriots team, and this Patriots team has a ton of a ton of talent. Um, you look at their record; they're five and two. And playing really off the hook, they struggled a little bit at the beginning of the season. So as you can see from the stats here, uh, don't forget, last season, uh, five-star hustle had the New England Patriots. He took them uh, to, the, to the Super Bowl and lost in humiliating fashion to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So the Patriots roster is pretty solid. They are now a 90 overall. Uh, in Soden Bowl, a couple moves made by A. Soden. You look up, uh, you look up at the top there, and you have the offense ranked number five in the league. You have the offense at number five. You have a defense playing number four, number three against the run. Uh, you have the number six running game. Of course, of course, Sony Michelle led the league in rushing last season. Uh, here is. Here is where they're struggling right now. The they're 0 and 2 in the division. So although they are potentially tied for first in this division depending on the Miami Buffalo outcome here. Um this team needs to win inside the division. They're going to have to beat the Jets, the Dolphins and the Bills. They've already lost to the Bills and Dolphins. They got creamed by the Bills in week 1. And then they lost in a very close game to the Miami Dolphins. Uh, I don't think they've played the New York Jets yet. Uh, one big change I see here, A. Soden moving over to the Patriots, is Peters. Peters has 12 touchdowns and 8 picks. Uh, he's got a flip touchdown interception ratio, something that A. Soden struggled with when he was the Bears. So again, you can see the AFC East standings on that right side. Technically, the Patriots and Bills right now are tied for first, but the Bills are yet to play the Dolphins this week. So if the Dolphins can come out, get a win, the Dolphins will leapfrog the Bills and Patriots and be in first place. Now, if the Bills win, then the Bills will retain first place. So I think no matter what happens today, the Patriots will be a second-place team. So uh, I think the Patriots are going to root for a Bills loss here because he, he matched up better against the Dolphins. And then, of course, you get the Jets right there just to ha just one game back. You look at their receiving leaders. Sutton, 16 catches, 386 yards, and five touchdowns. And then you have Philip Dorsett. You have Adam Thielen, who's been there for a few seasons. O'Shaughnessy's played good down the stretch. And then White, the guy they traded for from the Chicago Bears. Uh, White was a – he's a running back. He's the Patriots' second running back. And he's almost like a James White-style running back. Then you look at the rushing, and you can see it there. You have Sony Michelle with almost 1,000 yards. He's really just 300 yards away. He has six touchdowns. And then White coming in with 266 yards. The Patriots have rushed for over 1,000 team rushing yards. Um, that's really good. That's, that's really solid, uh, if you ask me. But Then you move down the list. You have McKinley, who is a superstar X-Factor with 10 sacks on the season so far. And then Shazier, five interceptions from that linebacker position. Uh, and then uh, you look over, um, you can see that they're 
top, their upcoming free agents. They're going to have to re-sign Stephon Gilmore. You have Adam Thielen. You have McKinney, McKinley, who we just spoke about. Uh, these guys are all, uh, all ready to be free agents when you look at this thing. Um, so to me, are the New England Patriots for real? Uh, I would say, I would say, yeah, the Patriots are for real. A. Soden continues to improve now in his third Soden Bowl season, first one with the Patriots. I would say, yes, the Patriots are for real, and I would go one step further and say the AFC East is the best division in Soden Bowl by far. So there you go. I said it. All right, let's move on to our next one. Our next one we have... We have our broadcast pros, CMG and Snipes TV. If you guys didn't catch this, uh, Snipes TV and CMG. CMG does our Monday night football. Snipes does our Wednesday night primetime football. Both these guys knocked it out of the park. I was really impressed. Now, don't forget, Soden Bowl does our own Soden Bowl network. We do Thursdays and Saturdays. Uh, but these two guys adding two different characters to the lineup with their own unique styles is is really awesome because it's almost like bringing in other professional networks like you see uh, in the NFL, like you have CBS, you have Fox, you have ESPN. So it's really cool to see these guys come in and, and just give their own flair, their own style. You know, it was really good and it's cool to support them as well. You know, more more action out there for the community. Um, guys, look, if you're looking to take your league to the next level, you got to contact CMG. you got to contact Snipes Television. You know, even if you do your own broadcast, it's awesome to bring another flavor in there. Uh, so both these guys really knocked it out of the park. It looked like we had two good games. Uh, the Houston Texans dominating the Titans. Uh, Houston will be brought up again later in this broadcast. And then you had the upset. The Cleveland Browns go they, – they host the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, I'm sorry. They go into Cincinnati and absolutely demolish the Bengals. I'm sorry. I think they hosted it. I'm looking at the end zone in that picture. But uh, the Cleveland Browns were the home team, and the Cincinnati Bengals were away. And Cleveland just rocked them. And it was a fun broadcast. Uh, so, again, big shout-out to CMG Broadcasting and Snipes Television. Um, you can check them out. They are on Twitter. They're on Twitch. Uh, very well-known group of guys. So, again, a huge shout-out to uh, CMG and Snipes Television. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so now we're going to move into another one. All right. A rules update. So we like to, we like to change things up in Soden Bowl from time to time. And um, you look at this and you say, okay, well, the rules, I think, needed to be adjusted. And then not only do we adjust the rules here in Soden Bowl, but we try to go to the next step. And by going to the next step, I'll show you here real quick what I'm talking about. So we have our rules. Our rules have been updated. Let me take you back to the beginning here. All right, there's our rules page. The welcome, yada, yada. I'm not going to go over the whole rule book with you. I'm not going to waste your time. But our rule book is actually in book form. You can share it on social media. You can download it. You can print it. You can zoom in. You can do whatever the heck you want with this thing, as long as you know the rules. So Soden Bowl owners, pay attention. We have some changes. Um, there also, there's a table of contents down here. If you guys want to click that over here on the left side, you can see it brings you to whatever you need it to bring you to. Okay? Let me put that away. Uh, looking through the rules here, some things that have changed. Uh, the QB scramble, if you move out of the pocket manually, not in play art, you better be doing it because protection is breaking down. If no one is open, of course, you can step up and run, but you better have scanned the field. We're going to turn the page. I think I went one too far there on you. Nope. 
QB scramble. So you better look down the field. Uh, once you mainly move out of the pocket, you can look downfield, but you should keep this realistic and not attempt to manipulate the AI. We took out the 10 yards. You can now toss it downfield as long as it's realistic. If you run into the sidelines and stopping and trying to playmaker people, you're in the wrong. Uh, another one that has changed here, the hurry up. The hurry up should only be used once per drive. So you can use this thing once per drive now or under two minutes in the half or overtime. It may also be used with under four minutes left in the game or down by 21 points or more. So if you're down by 21, you can go hurry up at any point. If it's there's four minutes left in the fourth quarter, you can go hurry up. Or you can do it once per drive. Stat padding, fourth down rules, those pretty much all stay the same. Uh, play selection, uh, player adjustments, those things all stay the same. Coverage play, again, safeties and cornerbacks may not be used in the linebacker position. Um, of course, if the quarterback leaves the pocket, all bets are off. Now, we have a common misconception here in Soden Bowl. In the coverage, uh, dude, this is, these guys, this is really easy. Um, just cover, just obey your play art. You know, if you see a guy crossing, you want to go grab him, then go grab him, but you got to stay with him. Now, if the quarterback moves out of the pocket, all bets off. You can run and cover whoever the heck you want, do basically whatever you want as long as you're not interfering. And, you know, go from there. Now, play action. This has been brought up a few times. If you have play action and say you're in a zone and the quarterback does play action, you come blitzing in because you think it's a run. Well, you got fooled and you can either continue to the quarterback and attempt a sack or you can pick up somebody, you know, that's within your range that you need to pick up or you can go back and try to regain your your coverage that you once had. So you are not limited to just running backwards and, and back out of the play. You can take the quarterback down. Now, new rule here, edge rusher. If you are manually controlling an ed, edge rusher, you cannot run around the outside blocker. So you can run straight ahead, cut to the inside, use your special moves, but you cannot. Let's say you're lined up on the left side. And you snap the ball, you're the left outside rusher. You cannot run further to the left and then back around the blocker uh, to get a sack. And what this does is it's actually a glitch in the game. The AI blocker, once you flare out to the left if you're the left rusher or if you're the right rusher, you flare out to the right. Uh, if you go far enough outside of those borders, the blocker will stop trying to block you and you'll get an easy sack. So we don't want to see that, guys. If you're going to get those edge rushers, you can run straight down. You can cut back inside. You can use your special moves, but you shouldn't be defeating the AI. Uh, special team stays the same. General manager rules all stay the same. We define the roster changes a little bit better. Um, bidding and all that stuff stays the same. And our disclaimer in the back, uh, basically, this is super simple. Look, guys. These are suggested rules. The percentages in there are suggested. We understand that every game is different. There's injuries. You may fall down 35 nothing in the first quarter, and then how's it going to be? You know, How are you going to try to maintain those percentages? Again, these are suggestions. Um, if you do not adhere to the suggestions, you just better be ready to explain yourself um, and explain yourself in a manner as you would probably see on Sunday would be something that I would... Uh, go after. So again, new rule book up, sodenbull.com slash league dash rules or in the stats more section of the website under SB rules. So make sure you guys check those out. All right, moving back in here. So our rules update is done. Our playoff picture. Our playoff picture is here. Now, again, we're only at the halfway point of the season, so I want to touch on a few things. We're going to start off with the question. Playoff picture, T. Hoyt, the team to beat in season number 98. I think the answer is yes. Now, I know you guys are going to jump on me. You have Eat More Chicken, who won the Super Bowl. Uh, you have the Cincinnati Bengals. You have the undefeated Dallas Cowboys uh, over in the NFC, I saw some debate in the chat saying AFC is better than the NFC. Well, uh, yes and no. Overall, 
If I was to take the playoff teams from the NFC and pit them up against the playoff teams from the AFC, I think the NFC will win the Super Bowl. Example, last season. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, went to the Super Bowl and beat the New England Patriots, led by five-star Hustla, who, oh, by the way, is now in the NFC. So the two teams that were in the Super Bowl last year reside both in the NFC now. Five-star Hustler taking over a very good Minnesota Vikings team and dominating uh, in his first game with Minnesota. So I look for, I look for, um, I look for five-star to have a good season. He's got to come back from a deep hole uh, that the old Minnesota Vikings owner put them in, but he won pretty big in his first game. So we're going to start over in the AFC. We have the number one seed, Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, they did have that upset loss on primetime Snipes Television uh, to the Cleveland Browns. Number two, the before mentioned, Houston Texans, just a half game down of the Bengals. Otherwise, they'd be the one seed. Uh, they ha- they either had their buyer or they haven't played yet this week. But number two is T. Hoyt's Texans. These guys can score often from anywhere on the field on any down. They have the most plays of over 70 yards in the league. And no one's close. Then you have Rev's Bills. Now, Rev Rev took over a very underachieving Buffalo Bills team at the end of last season. He rolled off a couple really nice victories, comes into season number 98, molds the team a little bit more into his fashion, and now he leads the AFC East. Uh, with a Buffalo Bills roster, he does have Ezekiel Elliott, a superstar X-Factor halfback, But aside from that, he has a very vanilla roster, but you wouldn't know it by the way he plays. He comes in, he's dominating. Uh, Again, he's one of the few people that absolutely blew out Ace Oden's Patriots. I think he scored like 40 or 50 points on him. Had time still been running, he probably would have 100 points if they gave him another quarter. Uh, But the Buffalo Bills at the three seed. The four seed is the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, this Chiefs team is an interesting story. They were coached by a Hall of Fame owner, who really just kind of turned the key off uh, just a couple weeks ago. And then Lurk God comes back into the league, a Soden Bowl veteran, somebody with elite stick skills, takes over a very elite Kansas City Chiefs team that's got weapons all over the place. So watch out for the Kansas City Chiefs. They are my four seed currently. I look for them to move up. Number five, another really good owner, Waffle House, and his Baltimore Ravens. Right now, they have the wild card. Uh, they have the wild card right now, mainly because the Cincinnati Bengals only have one loss on the season. So the Baltimore Ravens, to me, right now, are the number one wild card team in the league. And then here's a, here's a bit of an upset: Mister Witness and the L.A. Chargers. Now the Chargers have won this AFC West here the last couple years. Uh, This year, the Kansas City Chiefs are on a tear, uh, and that's due in large part to Lurk God taking over a Chiefs team that was on a two-game skid and then winning. In the hunt, you still have the New England Patriots. Uh, We asked if they were for real. They are, but they're playing in the toughest division in Soden Bowl. You have Rev. You have Ura. You have himself, a Soden, and then you have Jay Wood 1313. Now, Jay Wood is another one of those elite stick skills, and you see him. You look at that. In the hunt, you have three AFC East teams. You have the Patriots, Dolphins, and then you have the Jets after the Jaguars. Now, the Jaguars and Jets are a toss-up here. Uh, really, these guys could go anywhere now. Jay Wood took over a Jets team again that was struggling. Uh, he's done nothing but win. And then you have the Cleveland Browns, Coach Brap, B Rap, as uh, as Snipes calls him. You have B Rap, uh, B Rap getting it done with Cleveland. He did have a he did have a letdown game versus the New England Patriots. He got absolutely rocked, thirty one to nothing. So he's going to have to play more consistent if he's going to make a run. And then you have the Oakland Raiders. The Raiders, Dusk, uh, a very good owner with that Oakland Raiders team. He is winning games that last season the old Raiders owner had no business winning, so he's getting it done. Keep an eye on those Las Vegas Raiders and uh, Coach Dusk and see how he does. Now let's flip it to the NFC, the only undefeated in Soden Bowl, the King 
ex Booker himself and his Dallas Cowboys, who were just a few plays away from a potential Super Bowl bid back in season 97. And then you have the Super Bowl, the reigning Super Bowl champion led by Eat More Chicken, uh, the number two Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Then you have the number three team, my team, the L.A. Rams. Their only loss of the season came to the reigning Super Bowl champs in week one, 13 to 10 to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Then the fourth seed, the Chicago Bears, the Apex Super Bowl champion. Shout out to the Apex League, Apex Madden League. I'm sorry. Uh, you have the King of Wakanda. Uh, he's won like 700 and something games in a row, I guess. I don't know. The dude's phenomenal. But uh, he's playing really good with the Chicago Bears. He's got one or two losses on the season. Uh, but, again, he's in great playoff shape. He's turned around that Bears team. He has them playing lights out football right now with a rookie quarterback, Kennedy. He drafted a rookie that everybody kind of hemmed and hawed about and then come to find out he was a superstar development straight out of the draft. He takes him, throws him at quarterback, benches Mitch Trubisky, and has not looked back. The Chicago Bears have looked really good. Uh, I would not be surprised to see a Bears team upset a few teams and get into the Super Bowl in season number 98. At number five, you've got the number one draft pick in his Washington Redskins uh, in prime position here, either to take the division if they can roll off a win versus uh, King Booker or a wild card. And then we have the biggest surprise of the season so far for me, the Arizona Cardinals led by longtime veteran head coach Triple Aries, takes over a very roster-depleted Arizona Cardinals team, picks up a couple guys through the draft, free agency, uh, turns this team around, and the Arizona Cardinals are playing really good football. They've had a couple uh, let-down games the last couple weeks, but they're still close games. In the hunt, you have Y Rock ones, Philadelphia Eagles again. Uh, to me, that NFC East is the second best division in Soden Bowl. Uh, you have the Cowboys, you have the Redskins, you have the Eagles, and then you have the Giants who are still looking to get on track. Uh, then you have the New Orleans Saints. Now, the Saints, Panthers, and Falcons are there because there's just no one else to put there. The Saints, uh, they need to do a more consistent job of playing four quarters of football. Then you have the, the Panthers, led by Jay Cork, Hall of Fame head coach, Jay Cork 87. Jay Cork does a great job of developing a roster, but he took some time off, came back, and took over a Carolinas Panthers team that was flat. And it's going to take him a couple seasons to get this roster flipped around. He does have Delvin Cook at running back, so he can build on that. But aside from that, he's missing a lot of pieces, so he's kind of the odd man out. And then you have Phil. Coach Phil 03, his Atlanta Falcons were a wild-card playoff team last year. This year, uh, the, his rookie, his second-year starter, Brian, has, uh, he's hit the sophomore woes this season. So that Atlanta Falcons team struggling a little bit. They're going to have to turn it around and uh, get this thing going if he wants to sneak back in for a wild card. So this right here is our season number 98 playoff picture. Again, a shout out to Lee Crawler, the grown folks online community, Discord providing an outstanding server for us to use. Of course, YouTube, our platform for me to talk your ears off. And then a shout out to CMG Broadcasting and Snipes Television. Everything here is sponsored by Allied Plumbing and Heat, a name that you can trust. I am S. Soden, and this has been an episode of Run It Back. Have a good weekend, guys. Everybody be safe. Make sure you check out those new rules. Link is in the menu. Later, dudes.